This video will show you how to do a loss payout when there's a discount rate. Problems number four through eight all have discount rates. We're going to look at problem number seven so that I can give you the premium that is written evenly over the year beginning 9-1-X-1. Since I don't have time to show you how to do this mathematically, I'm just going to give it to you here in this video. And I'll walk you through most of problem seven just to make sure that you're on the right track with all of these problems. We'll get through at least the first year and part of the second year so that you can clearly see how to do the loss payout and the loss reserves with the discount rate. So let's begin with premium written and premium earned as you should every time. Premium written X1 and premium written X2 when premium is written evenly over the year beginning 9-1-X-1. If you divide the 3 million by 12, that equals 250,000. We make the assumption when premium is written evenly over the year that 1 12th of it is written each month. So we know that it's written in 9, 10, 11, and 12 in year 1. And in year 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, and eight. In other words, September through December in year one and in year two, January through August. So it's simply written for four months in year one and for eight months in year two. So we simply multiply 250 times four for year one, which equals one million. And 250,000 times 8 for year 2, which equals 2 million. So our X1 premium written is 1 million, and our X2 premium written is 2 million. In each problem, you need to pay attention to whether or not it's asking you for the premium written all on a certain date, in which case the premium written in X1 will be the total premium, and the premium written in X2 will always be zero if it's written all on. The other problems that are written evenly over the year should all be 7-1-X-1, and so you know how to calculate the premium earned on those. 1 8th and 3 quarters, or 1 8th of the total premium in the first year and 3 quarters of the total premium in the second year. Now let's look at premium earned for this problem. So again, I'm just going to give you these numbers because I don't want to take the time in this class to show you mathematically how to calculate premium evenly over the year beginning 9-1-X-1. The number for year one for premium earned is 166,667. And for year two, it's 2,166,667. So those will be the numbers you use for your calculations for problem number seven. So now let's go ahead and calculate our input variables. We'll start with year one, and we'll start with expenses. We have a 30% expense ratio. So 30% times our premium written of 1 million in year one. So 300,000 in expenses. Now for losses. The loss ratio is 60% here, and that times our premium earned of 166,667 equals $100,000. Our loss payout is 50%. So losses paid equals 100 times 50% equals $50,000. Our loss reserves then, under our normal method of doing this, are 100,000 times 50% again and $50,000. However, in this problem, as in problems four through eight, we have a 4% discount rate. What this discount rate is telling us is that we don't, as an insurance company, have to account for the entire $50,000 of losses incurred that are not paid in the first year. We can sort of assume that we'll be making at least 4% on those reserves, and therefore we can discount it at 4%. So the way we do this is our 50,000 divided by 1 plus 0.04, or 50,000 divided by 1.04, which equals 48,077. We also need to calculate our investment income, or interest earned, and that's going to be our 1.6 million times our 7% investment income rate, and that gives us 112,000. 
So make note of all those numbers. Make sure you have them written down because I'm going to clear this screen and do the T accounts. So our T accounts are cash, our loss reserve, our unearned premium reserve, and of course policyholder surplus slash income. And of course this is all for year one. So the first thing is we have to account for our written and earned premium. Our written premium goes here and it's also important that even when I don't label the T accounts you do, this will help you as you're going through the problem and it'll help me give partial credit in case you make any mistakes. All right, and our offsetting balance of our written premium is gonna be our earned premium and our unearned premium reserve. We know that we earned premium of 166,667 and since that was earned, it is a credit to income and the rest has to go in our unearned premium reserve. So again, that's a credit. We had a debit to cash, which was an increase in cash, and an increase in our unearned premium reserve account. So that's 833,333. Now let's do our expenses. Expenses were 300,000, so that is a credit or a decrease in cash, credit on the asset side, and an offsetting debit to income. And then our interest earned, we'll leave the losses, which are the most difficult for the end. Our interest earned was 112, so credit to cash and income. And now we'll account for our losses. We know that we paid losses of 50,000. So we'll put that here, losses paid. And we have to debit our policyholder surplus or income for our losses paid as well, because we recognize those as expenses. But our total losses incurred was $100,000. So before we had the discount rate, we would credit loss reserves for $50,000. But we only have to credit loss reserves or account for the discounted amount. And that was $48,077. And the corresponding entry is also the discounted loss reserve. So we only have to recognize an expense of $48,077 in our loss reserve. All right, now let's get our balances. So this is 762 and this is 119.410 on the debit side. Okay, so we have an increase in cash of 762. We have an increase in our loss reserve of 48.77, an increase in our unearned premium reserve of about 8.33, and a decrease in policyholder surplus of 119. 410. So our cash account is going to be our 1 million plus the 762. And let's put that down here. Stocks and bonds, I'll just put 600,000 for both. And over here, our unearned premium reserve is 833.333. And our loss reserve is 48077. Then for our policyholder surplus, we subtract because again, this is a company that is growing but they look like they're losing income out of policyholder surplus. And so 1.6 million minus 119.410 is 1,480,590. So our total is 2,362,000 and the same over here. Always calculate your totals because if they differ, that's a good check to show you that you may have a problem in your T accounts because I can give more partial credit if I see that you've actually put the wrong balance, you've tried to come over here and figure it out. If you don't even do the calculation and you assume these are the same, then I would take off more points. So make note of all of this and I'm gonna zero this out. So we left our balances and cleared out our T accounts and let's now do year two. So for year two, and I'll go ahead and show you how to set up the T accounts all the way through so that on problem number seven, all you'll have to do on your own is just to calculate your T account balances and then bring them back to the balance sheet. But do make sure and show all of your work. Don't just skip over that even though I'm showing you how to do it here. Walk through it with me as if you're doing it yourself. All right, so now for X2, we know that our written premium for X2 was 2 million and our earned premium for X2 was 2,166,667. So let's begin with expenses of 30% times our 2 million of 600,000. We'll go ahead and do our interest income or investment income of our total 2,362,000 times 7% or 0.07 and that gives us 165,340. Our losses incurred 
for year two are going to be our 2,166,667 times our 60% loss ratio. And that gives us 1,300,000. 50% of that is going to be paid. That's 650,000. And our loss reserve. And we'll go ahead and include the discounted loss reserve is going to be 50% since it happens to be the same. 650,000 divided by 1.04 equals 625,000. One thing we do need to do is go back and calculate our loss reserve difference from last year. And we could have done that last year. Most of the time you want to go ahead and do that, but you won't use the loss reserve difference until the second year. So last year's loss reserve, remember, was 48,077 discounted. But we took that from 50,000. So the difference is 1,000. 923. In other words, we were able to only reserve 48,077 so that we could pay this year's losses at 50,000 for a difference of 1,923. So let me show you now how to account for all of that. I'll erase these calculations. Just make sure that you've made note of them. Starting with our cash account, year two, loss reserve, and unearned premium reserve and policyholder surplus income. All right, so we'll start with our written premium again. We actually write another two million in written premium. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in cash. And we show that we earn 2,166,667. And so that's gonna go as a credit to income. That's gonna be a credit to income because we earned it. Now this can kind of seem a little bit tricky in terms of what you put ultimately in your unearned premium reserve. But let me simplify it. What we're going to do is we know that last year we had set up a reserve for 833,333. And all of these policies are one year policies. So whatever we had in the reserve from last year has to be debited this year. So we credited our unearned premium reserve for 833,000 333 last year. We know that we have to zero that much out. So we put a debit to unearned premium reserve for 833,333. Now we need a number to make these three numbers balance, which will be what's left in our unearned premium reserve. So we have a debit to cash for 2 million, and we have a credit to policyholder surplus for 2,166,000, we'll just make that a negative. And we have a debit to unearned premium reserve, and that will be a positive since our debits are positive and our credits are negative. So what does that give us? The difference here is gonna be 666,667 or six, and I won't take off for $1 rounding errors. So that's the amount we'll put here, 666,667. And that's the easiest way to actually figure out what your balance here should be, your credit to your unearned premium reserve. It's also, if you go back to our premium written from year one and year two and premium earned from year one and two, if you add up these and these and you take the difference between the total premium written and the total premium earned, that's also that 666667. The premium written X1 plus the premium written X2 is of course the 3 million, and the premium earned X1 and the premium earned X2 is 2,333,334. That taken from 3 million will give you your 666667. So that's our premium. Now for an easy one, expenses. Our expenses were 600,000, so we'll credit cash and debit income and our interest earnings, a debit to cash, and a credit to income. Now for our losses. The first thing I usually do here is to go ahead and pay the loss from last year that was reserved. So we're actually paying that out of cash. So that's $50,000 because that's the amount of losses that we actually have to pay. But we only set up a reserve for 48077 So we can only debit out of our loss reserve, what we put in there. We'll label this year one, loss paid. So we have to put the difference somewhere. 
That difference goes out here as an expense of 1923 that we just calculated. So that's the loss reserve difference. And it's kind of like a deferred expense. We only had to expense 48077 last year. This year, since we're actually paying 50000 we now have to reserve 1923 So that's it for last year's losses. For this year's losses, we know that we pay 650000 So that comes out of income as well. And we reserve our 625000 which also comes out of income. So that should be everything. And this is the most number of entries that you will have in any of these problems. I'll let you go ahead and calculate your T account balances and then bring them back to your balance sheet. But remember that your unearned premium reserve here is going to be this 666,667 because you take the 833333 and you zero that out. I don't need you to calculate this T account balance because I know what's happening here. As long as you remember to put that number here and the same with the loss reserve, you're zeroing out the 48,077 and then adding back in the 625. So that 625 is gonna come here. So that's all I'm gonna do for problem seven, but that should carry you most of the way through if you have any questions, please let me know.